good afternoon welcome to the session on analysis of compression members in the case of analysis of compression members in this session we are going to study about column section that is stanchion in the case of analysis of uh, compression member normally the properties of the section will be given means the section will be given so properties could be easily obtained from the steel table and the length and its condition will be given it's our duty to find out what will be the load carrying capacity of the column section either it can be a factored load or a safe load that can be allowed on the column section now let us study about the different types of column sections how it can be analyzed and can be the load carrying capacity can be determined so in this problem you have been given with ishb 350 at 0.674 kiloton per meter and the unsupported length of the column is 4 meters the end condition of that column is both ends are been pinned that means it has inched let us find out the value of the k factor in the effective length from the code book and we have to determine here the safe load carrying capacity of the column section now if i uh, look into the table this is how the section looks like and if you looking at the properties of this ishv 350 at 0.674 kiloton per meter that is this one you can get the property area of the section as 85.91 cm square the depth of the section 350 mm the width of the section is 250 thickness of the flange of the section 11.6 mm and thickness of the web tw is 8.3 mm along with this we are going to note down the radius of gyration about both zz axis and yy axis we are noting down the radius of gyration about the two properties so all these properties are given means it is understood if you have been given with the column section you have to obtain it from the steel table knowing this values we are marking all this this is the depth of the section the flange width thickness of the web thickness of the flange let us look into the property buckling class of the cross section according to the page number 44 of is 800 this whatever the section that's been given there is a rolled steel i section we have to find out the properties like h by bf h is the depth of the section bf is the breadth of the flange it is 1.4 which is greater than 1.2 the limit that has been given in the second column now look at whether the thickness of the flange tf is less than 40 mm or it is less than greater than 40 and less than 100 now here flange thickness is 11.6 mm as from the obtained from the code since it is less than 40 mm we are going to look into this buckling class for zz about a and buckling class about yy about b so we are looking we have to look into the table or the table of class a for zz axis and class b for yy axis let us just find out the slenderness ratio of the member in general lambda is given as scale by r 
L is the actual length, K is the coefficient, the constant, which has to be multiplied with respect to the end condition. Now the end condition is both the ends are pin, that means both ends are inch. If you look at the table 11, the end condition for both ends inched is 1 times L. The value of K is equal to 1 here. Therefore, the effective length is equal to 1 times the actual length, that's 4000 mm. So, lambda over zz axis is equal to KL by RZZ. RZZ is also already been obtained as 149.3 mm. Get the value of lambda, it's 26.80. And we are for this lambda value, we are going to look into the classification A as given in the code. So, if we take out the page number 40 of IAC 800. That's table 9a. You'll get the stresses, yield stress values along the x-axis, the lambda value KL by R, and for the lambda z equal to 26.8, which lies between 20 and 30, by interpolation, you have to get the value of this lambda. It's 226 for 20. 220 for 30 lambda slenderness ratio get by interpolation the difference of 20 and 30 is 10 and 226 minus 220 is 6 for 26.8 the difference is from with respect to 20 is 6.8 by cross multiplication get the value of fcd that is 221.92 Newton per millimeter square. This is along ZZ axis. Similarly, get the value for the YY axis. The slenderness ratio is scale by R minimum. It's 74.91. Looking into the page 41 of the code table 9 for FI equal to 250. Get the interpolation interpolated value for 70 and 80. Now already you are mastering this interpolation. Defense of that is 10. And your FCD is 16. For 74.91, it's 4.91. FCD equal to 158.14. Newton per millimeter square. The design compressor stress of the column section is the least of the two values, whatever we have obtained with respect to zz axis and yy axis. The least of that is 158.14 that has to be taken as the value for consideration for calculating the strength of the member. The load capacity is equal to stress into area of the section, stanchion. It's 158.14 into area of the column section is 8591 divided by 1000 to get it in terms of kilonewtons. You are going to get this as 1358.6 kilonewton. This is the total load carrying capacity of the member. In the question it is given as to determine the safe load carrying capacity of the column section. Therefore, this load carrying capacity of whatever you have obtained that is 1358.6 kiloton should be divided by 1.5 that is a partial safety factor as given in the code and the safe load is 905.73 kilonewton. This is how we have to solve the problem that is analyzed. We should analyze the problem in this manner for all other coming problems. Now let us have a look on the second problem. See the changes between the first and the second one. 
Example 2. The design strength of the rolled steel section of ISHB 300 at 0.588 kiloton per meter has to be found out. In this case, the effective length is directly given, it is 3 meter. So there is no need to look into the table there, table 11. Directly can make use of it. Let us note down the properties of this ISHB 300 from the steel table. with 58.8 kg per meter, the area of that section is 74.85 cm square, convert that into mm square, the depth of this section is 300, width of the flange is 250, thickness of the flange is 10.6, thickness of the web is 7.6 mm, the radius of garrison about the two axes, zz and yy is 12.95 cm and 5.81 cm. 5.41 not 81. After knowing the properties of this section, you can mark the dimensions there as you observe. You can determine the buckling class of this section. Looking into table 10. Finding out the value of H by BF value. Now in this case H by BF is 300 by 250 equal to 1.2. It lies in this category. And the thickness of the flange which is 10.6 mm is below 100 mm. Therefore to know the strength of the member we have to calculate the FCD value along these two direction. That is for the ZZ axis we have to look into buckling class B. For the YY axis, you have to look into the buckling class C. Earlier it was A class and B class for the problem number 1. Now here it is B and C we have to refer. Whatever the procedure of solving we adopted for the previous problem, the same procedure could be adopted. So you can make use of the buckling class B for ZZ axis and C for YY axis. So calculate the slenderness ratio lambda, it's a effective length to least radius of gyration, sorry radius of gyration, effective length is directly given 3 meters, we will calculate along the zz axis, we have obtained the lambda as 23.37 it lies between 20 and 30 by interpolation you get the value of FCD now you're used to this from the earlier videos you know how to calculate by interpolation and all these are self-explanatory many a times we have been adopting this in most all the problems By cross multiplication, get the value of FCD along the ZZ axis. It works out to be 222.15 Newton per millimeter square. Now, in the same way, let us calculate the slender ratio lambda, and it is 55.45. Get the compressive stress along that direction from referring table 9C in page number 42 of IS 800. So, by interpolating between 50 and 60 get the value of FCD for 50 it is 183 60 168 difference of that 10 153 and 545.45 what is the value of this FCD it's 183 minus the cross multiplication value. The smallest of that is 174.83 is the FCD value. This has to be multiplied by the area of the section to get the load carrying capacity of the member. 
In this problem, he has said only load carrying capacity, therefore, we have stopped at this stage. 1308.6 kiloton is the load carrying capacity, it is the ultimate load. If we want to calculate the safe load, just divide this by 1.5. Let's go into the third problem example. Now it is a built up section. Made an I section has been prepared prepared by making use of flanges and web a flats of 320 300 mm by 30 mm, 20 by 50 mm flats. In the previous two problems, it was the rolled steel section. We've obtained the properties from the steel table. In this case, we have to calculate the values of the area, the moment of inertia about ZZ axis, moment of inertia about YY axis, and the radius of gyration about ZZ axis and YY axis. Now this is the I section. The flange is of 300 by 30 and the web section is 20 by 500 which is being welded at the joints. The total area of the section is 2 times the area that is 300 into 30 plus the area of the web is 20 into 500. We got the area of the built up section. Z axis and Y axis. Let us find out the moment of inertia of both the axis. Then get the radius of correction about both the axis. Slenderness ratio about both the axis. Then calculate the minimum slender FCD value. Multiply by the area, you will get the load carrying capacity of the column section. Now here, since it is a built up section, we know we can calculate the moment of inertia of the flange section about its centroidal axis but we want the moment of inertia about zz axis of the built up section therefore by applying the parallel axis theorem we have to transfer the moment of inertia about of this section about the built up section zz so moment of inertia zz about this axis is equal to ig it's a moment of inertia of the flange plate plus area into twice the into square of the distance between them. This is what the parallax theorem says. Two times we have multiplied because you got two flanges here. So IG is BD cube by 10. You got four so 675.75 to the power 3 mm to the power of 4. Area of one flange is 300 mm by 30. It is 9000 mm square get the centroidal distance differences it's 500 by 2 plus 30 by 2 265 the moment of inertia of the web section it passes through the center of the axis itself therefore it is b d cube by 12 b is 20 d cube is 500 cube by 12 now find out the moment of inertia of the entire built up section it's a moment of inertia of the flange sections by making use of this formula. The moment of inertia of the web section is 208.33. You add up here. Get the total quantity. It's 1473.73 into 10 power 6 mm to the power of 4. This is a moment of inertia about ZZ axis of the built up section. In the same manner, you can calculate about yy axis. It is nothing but the moment on of finish of this one. All this passes exactly through the centroidal axis of the webs. Therefore, no need to apply any panel axis theorem here. This is 2 times 2 numbers into d b cube by 12. d is 30, b cube is 300 by 12 is a formula. And here it is d is 500 into 20 cube by 12. Moment of finish about y axis is equal to 135.33 into 10 power 6 mm to the power of 4. So rzz is equal to izz by a. The radius of carriage is under the root 
i by a it is 229.41 mm similarly get about y y axis at 69.52 mm the effective slenderness ratio of the member is given as kl by r effective length is 6 meters we have been given with the end condition that both the ends are restrained in direction position that means to say both the ends are fixed let us look into the table 11 of the code for the restrained conditions both in translation and rotation at both the ends we have the value equal to 0.65 times of l the effective length is 0.65 l it is 3900 mm you can get the values of lambdas for both along both the direction about zz and yy for this values looking into the buckling class table corresponding tables we can get the lambda fcd values now here this is uh, in the table 10 page 40 of the code no sorry 45 of the code 44 of the code for the welded section and for the thickness less than 40 and greater than 40 the classes have been defined let us see that what is the thickness of the flange in our case it is 30 mm means less than 40 mm therefore we have to look into the buckling class of b for zz axis and c for yy axis these are the two buckling classes we have to refer and according to that we have to obtain the fcd value from the table for b look into the page number b class look into the table 9b page number 41 of the code and for lambda equal to 17 which lies between 10 and 20 let us have the values for 10 it is 227 for 20 it is 225 enter it in the respective columns and rows by interpolation get the value for fcd for 17 Lambda equal to seventeen. Yes, it is two twenty-five point six newton per millimeter square. Similarly, about y y axis, for the lambda value equal to fifty-six point zero nine. Look into the table nine C, as per the Buckling classification, in page number forty-two of the code. Take out that extract of that table for fifty six, which lies between fifty and sixty. Note on the values of F C D one eighty three and one sixty eight. These are the two values. Difference is fifteen for ten for six point zero nine. What's the value? It's one eighty three minus the cross multiplication of this part. It's one seventy three point eight seven. Now let us calculate the design stress to be used to calculate the load carrying capacity of the member. The minimum value is taken there. The minimum about z z axis and y y axis is one seventy three point eight seven newton per millimeter square. We'll make use of this value to get the load carrying capacity of the column section so stress into area is 4868.36 kN is the load carrying capacity of this given column section ishp 300 and let's look into the another problem this is allowable load divided by 1.5 if you look at the other problem 
where you have been asked to find out the design strength of the member for a edge section fabricated as shown in the figure. Earlier problem was also a similar type where we had 300 by 30, 20 by 500 but it is 500 by 60, thickness of the flange has increased. Let us see that what be the change we are going to find the table that we have to refer. The total area of the column section is areas of these two flanges and the area of the web. It's 85,000 mm square. Find out the moment of inertia about ZZ axis and YY axis of the built up section. It's a moment of inertia of the two flanges and one web section. So as it was said in the previous problem, the moment of inertia of these flanges has to be transferred onto the built up section ZZ axis by applying the parallel axis theorem. So it says that it is 2 times 2 flanges, moment of inertia about its centroidal axis that is BD cube by 2n plus area of this section, h is the distance between these two sections. Value. It's 500 by 2 plus half of the thickness of the flange, 280 mm. The amount of inertia of the web section is B is 50, D cube is 500 cube by 12. It's a moment of inertia of the flanges plus the moment of inertia of the web. The final product of this is 5.24 into 10 to the power of 9 mm to the power of 4. Get the value of about yy axis. We are not applying any parallel axis theorem here. It passes exactly through the centroidal axis. Therefore, it is db cube by 12 two times for the flanges and db cube by 12 for the web portion. d is 500, b cube is 50 cube by 12, it's 125, 1.25 to 10 power of 9, mm to the power of 4. Get the radius of gyration about both the axes, it's a root of i by a in general, and it's about zz axis is to 48.36 mm and about yy it is 121.51 mm. The effective slenderness ratio is given by KL by R. Actual length of the member is 8 meters. The end condition says that it is pinned at both the ends. Therefore, it's an, both the ends are inch. With respect to the table, it is 1 times the actual length. The value of K is 1 year. The effective length works out to be 8,000 mm. And after that, knowing that value, we can easily get the value of slenderness ratio about ZZ axis and YY axis. These are the two values. For these two values, we have to get the FCD value. From that, we are going to take the minimum one. FCD is obtained based on the buckling classification of the member. In this case, the thickness of the flange is greater than 40 mm, that is it's 60. In the previous problem it was 30 and it was less than 40 mm. We referred these two classes. Now the thickness of the member is greater than 40. Thickness of the flange is greater than 40. Therefore you have to look into buckling class C and D for ZZ and YY axis respectively. In the previous case for 30 these two we referred. Now we will refer the table 9C and 9D from page number 942 we can get the table 9C for 32.21 get the value of FCD. 32 lies between 30 and 40 for FI equal to 250. 
take the FCD values 211 and 198 the difference is 13 for 10 and for 32.21 you have to obtain the value and get the value of FCD it's 208.13 Newton per millimeter square similarly get the value from 9D for the buckling class D the value of lambda is 65.84 lies between 60 and 70 for 60 we got FCD equal to 150 for 70 we got 133 therefore by interpolation get the value of FCD it's 140.07 Newton per millimeter square the least is taken here therefore the least of that those two values is 140.07 Newton per millimeter square and the load carrying capacity of the member is 140.07 into area of the section is built up section is 85,000 sorry 85,000 mm square we are going to divide this by 1000 to get it in terms of kiloton in the question he has said that this one should have whether this column section whatever that has been given is it capable of taking up 11,000 kiloton yes whatever the value you have obtained here it's 11,906 kiloton that is 906 kiloton extra load can it can take therefore whatever the section that has been given here with welded he is capable of taking 11,000 kiloton load therefore it is safe hence the section is suitable hope you understood the simple procedure of analyzing the column section members in the similar manner you can see in the coming videos the different types of column sections the different connection de connections how to analyze that we'll study about thank you thank you for watching if you're not subscribed do subscribe now thank you once again